Hi friend, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are on week five of our journey through Exodus chapters one through 12. We're already on Exodus chapter nine. I am thrilled to be here with you and I am so thrilled that you are still here. Good job, excellent work. Uh, I hope that you, like me, are learning so much about who our God is. I am finding this to be very grounding in faith, uh, grounding in knowing who God is. So today, I noticed right off the bat that Exodus chapter 9 begins exactly the same way as chapter 8 did. Did you notice that too? Verse 1, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. And I love that. Yeah, when... We see repetition in scripture that always highlights the importance of the, of the passage. So after that, I dug into those who, what, when, where, how kinds of questions and the who remains the same. Like we have this big, long, uh, Moses gives a lot of real estate to these dialogues that involve the Lord, number one, and remembering that that name stands for Yahweh. When we see the Lord in all caps, that is Yahweh. When he speaks, it is so. We definitely see that today. And then we have on his team, Moses and Aaron, right? And then we have, of course, Pharaoh, and we still see the Egyptians as well. So team Lord, team Yahweh versus team Pharaoh, when, I think the when is important here. Uh, We have had five signs, five signs have taken place. And if we look at, let me see, what note did I Okay, yeah, (laughs) sorry, I lost my train of thought. Thank you for bearing with me. All right, those five signs, what are they? Uh, Number one, we had the staff turning into a serpent. Aaron's serpent ate up all the other serpents that the magicians were able to, I don't know, deceive Pharaoh with. Number two, water to blood, right? All the drinking wild water, the entire Nile River turning to blood. Number three, that plague of frogs. Number four, the plague of gnats. Number five, the plague of the swarms of flies. And I, I think we need to understand if when we ask when, when is this scenario taking place, we need to recognize that it is after these five signs. And what was the result? of this swarm of flies we saw back in chapter 8 24 throughout all the land of Egypt the land was ruined by the swarms of flies so this begins to really affect the Egyptian economy Uh, this hits Pharaoh's pocketbook but he still as we talked about last week his heart was hard. His heart just became harder with each of these signs. So what, what do we see today? Well, this very uh, familiar pattern with the signs. Uh, God asks Pharaoh and note there, I think it's fascinating that God asks Pharaoh, that God grants Pharaoh a choice here. He doesn't force Pharaoh's hand. Pharaoh is given a choice by God. And uh, so God asks, the Lord asks Pharaoh, look, let my people go. And here in verse two, then he gives another warning. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, meaning still retain them for some future use, behold, the hand of the Lord will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock. 
All right, I thought that was interesting that now we see the hand of the Lord. Remember, if we go back to that plague of gnats, uh, this was Exodus chapter 8, 19. The magicians, the Egyptian magicians themselves told Pharaoh, look, this plague of gnats, this is definitely the finger of the Lord. And we talked about that being uh, or that finger representing power, God's power. Uh, here we see the hand. The Lord introduces his whole hand. Uh, the hand is made up of the fingers and the thumb and the palm. And once again, the hand is symbolic of power. It's symbolic of strength. We see that in Joshua 8.20. The hand is actually or the, the hand is actually translated to power. So God is saying, look, my power, my strength, it's going to fall upon you with a very heavy hand. Um, and then we see he introduces what the sixth sign will be. And that is this plague. It's another plague, um, a plague on all of the livestock of Egypt. And this time he says there will be a distinction, right? There's going to be a distinction between the Egyptians, between your people and my people. This plague will not affect my people at all. And then we see verse six. I I highlighted this first. I don't know. And in my book, I underline all the Yahweh's or I highlight all the Yahweh's and I highlighted verse six. And the next day, the Lord did this thing. And remembering, remembering who the Lord is. I mean, he's mentioned here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. He is the hero of this story. Uh, this is a about who he is, the all-powerful God. This God of the Hebrews is all-powerful. And when he, Yahweh, his personal name to the Israelites, when he speaks, it is so. Let there be light. We saw this in Genesis and there was light and we could go down the list of when God speaks, it is so. And God has spoken all throughout Exodus, and it is so. It happens just as he says it will. And I think implicit in all of this, we see the faith of Moses and Aaron continuing to grow because they keep, they continue to trust, they continue to obey the Lord, and they go and do as the Lord says. But then on the flip side, we see the response of Pharaoh. He just continues to dig in his heels. He refuses to listen. He refuses to know the Lord. He refuses to believe in this God that is above him and above all the other gods in Egypt. Pharaoh refuses. He refuses to know the Lord. And so the Lord, the Lord does this thing. He does this thing. And we need to understand that now these really, and maybe even, maybe we even saw this last week, these plagues, these are turning into, these are acts of great judgment. Where did we, where do we see that? I've got a cross-reference. Um, I've got a cross reference down. Yes, okay. This has to do with the Lord's hand. When God says, uh, Behold, the hand of the Lord will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock. This was a cross reference I found for hand. And this was ex this was back in Exodus 7, 4, before God did, before Moses and Aaron did the first sign before Pharaoh, that sign of the staff turning into a serpent. God said this, Pharaoh will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring my hosts, my people, the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great acts of judgment. 
by great acts of judgment. And I can't remember if back in Exodus chapter 7, I unpacked that at all. I wanted to today. So I I looked those up. I added those to my keyword column. Great. This meaning remarkable or out of the ordinary in degree, magnitude, or effect. Acts of judgment. Friends, this is an act of punishment. This is punishment perceived as a result of judgment on someone. Um, so, yeah, this is going to answer the why question. But first, let's talk about how severe this plague will be. How severe is this plague of uh, uh, upon the livestock of Egypt? Verse 6 tells us all of the livestock of the Egyptians die. All of the livestock. Friends, this is stunning. This is shocking. I can't think of any greater magnitude than that. Um, and here's where the fear of the Lord comes in. When Yahweh speaks, it is so. He does as he says. Imagine, like, the, the livestock, here is, here is, here's the Egyptians, like, 401ks and savings and investments. Uh, everything is gone. It's gone. Imagine if that was everyone that lived in your country today all of their investments, all of their savings, gone, gone. And I think we have to ask, why? Why does God do this? And I think we see it here in this cross-reference of Exodus 7, 4. Here is God's act of judgment. Here is punishment against who? This is against Pharaoh and the Egyptians, the people he is leading. Um, They refuse to know and believe in the Lord. And how do we know when someone believes in the Lord? They are going to obey. They are going to do and conform to the Lord's will. Uh, Pharaoh is not off the hook here for his hard heart. Uh, He's not off the hook for his leadership. In fact, he's very accountable for his poor leadership choices and how he is leading Egypt astray um, by not knowing the Lord, by refusing to know him, by refusing to listen to him, by digging his heels in and being just so willful and hardened and stubborn. Um, His choice, friends, is devastating. It's devastating to himself and, and it's devastating to his people and his country and to all of his investments, his, his really everything, everything. Um, and we need to understand here or note here, I noted again, not one, like uh, Pharaoh's no dummy. He sent people to go check out the Israelite camp, and sure enough, not one of their livestock died. All right, so that is the sixth sign, uh, and this ought to show us, yes, Yahweh, what do we learn about Yahweh? He is powerful. He is strong. He is mighty. He is very much in control. And he will do as he says he will do. Uh, He's very gracious. He gave Pharaoh a warning. Here's yet another warning. Like how many warnings does Pharaoh need? How many choices would, or how many opportunities do we give? Um, I feel like we see the Lord being extremely gracious with Pharaoh and giving him a warning. Uh, It is Pharaoh who refuses to listen. And so much the same thing takes place with the seventh sign that we see in the second paragraph of today's lesson. Um, Again, 
all of the Egyptians are plagued by, um, all of the Egyptians are affected by this plague of boils. Doesn't this sound, this sounds horrific, friends. Horrific. What's a boil? It's a painful sore filled with a hard core, um, a hard cord filled with pus. Well, there were plenty of cross-references for boils. We see God utilizing boils as, um, as punishment that people might know him. He gives his own people, the Israelites, a warning. In Deuteronomy 28, 27, the Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors and scabs and itch of which you cannot be healed. That's what the Egyptians are feeling right now in the midst of the seventh sign. Uh, Revelation 16.2 was another cross-reference. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth and harmful, painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. Here was punishment. Here was a call to wake up and recognize and know Yahweh, know the Lord. Um, but what is the result? Friends, the result of sign six, the result of the seventh sign, uh, verse, verse seven, and Pharaoh sent and behold, not one of the livestock of Israel was dead, but the heart of Pharaoh was hardened and he did not let the people go. Verse 12, but the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh and he did not listen to them as the Lord had spoken to me, uh, to Moses. Friends, how is the Lord hardening Pharaoh's heart? It's by these signs. Pharaoh's just Pharaoh has a choice. He's digging in his heels. He is um he he, he refuses to bend. What a will. How stubborn he is. And so the Lord, uh, how is he hardening Pharaoh's heart? He's by performing these signs. But instead of Pharaoh's heart softening or even breaking, he's just becoming more stubborn, more willful. Oh, friends, that can be our tendency as well. Can't we? Can't we? become more stubborn and more willful in refusing to listen to the Lord in a way um, that he is calling us to. Uh, for me, I think that is a clear spiritual lesson here. Listen to Yahweh when he speaks. It is so. He is not a God to be trifled with. Uh, he is not some big genie in the sky just to give us whatever we want. Uh, he wants us to know him, to believe in him, to trust him, and then to obey him. So friends, here's a call for a heart search. Lord, search me and know me and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in your way. Uh, Lord, is there any way I am not being obedient to you today?